to outdo the King Zulu, but they're never allowed to outdo him, you know. <laughs> right now at float number six, the Soulful Warriors. Now, the Soulful Warriors are the ones who were supposed to guard the King and the Queen to make sure that they have a wonderful day today and that no one gets in their way. And they're throwing lots of doubloons. They're and teasing the crowd with those coconuts. Now coming up on us is a U.S. Navy band. You know, Charlie, I have never caught one of those golden nuggets, but those are the, one of the most treasured things, I think, for the people of New Orleans to catch one of those golden oh, nuggets. Oh, absolutely, especially when you consider that the Zulu organization members spend literally hours and hours uh, over the course of many weeks preparing for this parade and hand-painting each of those coconuts. They had a problem a few years ago with people putting out fake coconuts, but they corrected that by putting an official Zulu seal on each of the coconuts. So unless you have a coconut, with a Zulu official seal on it. You don't have the real thing. And you've got to have the real thing. Absolutely. You know, they have a competition, too, to see who can decorate the coconut the best. Well, let's look at the John McDonough High School Band going there by. There they are. We'll get to the costumes in a bit. You know, Zulu started back in 1906. William Story was the first king. And way back then, Zulu was a parody of Rex. The whole idea was um, to make fun of Zulu. And the first king, William Story, actually wore a Lord Pan hat as a crown and carried a banana as a scepter. Let's listen to the band. You're talking about the Zulu history, Meg. It was, they went to see a play. Uh, it was actually a play called uh, the uh, There Never, there never was, was a King and Never Will Be One. There like Never King, Was right? and Never Will Be a King. Yes, that's right. At the old Pythian Theater, which is now the Demontlazon building on Saratoga. And they got the idea for this spoof of Carnival. And actually, you're looking at what is now probably the third oldest carnival organization in New Orleans has just as much tradition and history about it as Rex or Comus or any of the old line crew. Uh -huh. This is an old line crew. It is. 1909 is when they finally were started. They were first called the Tramps. Float there number seven say. now, the Witch Doctor. And they still haven't thrown any of the... Ah, they're just with there a golden one. nugget. Up. <laughs> Margaret got a tambourine. The tambourine was taken from me. Looking at float number eight now, the ambassador. Now the theme this year is the book of nature. And these are the mysteries in Tibet. Here you see some of the, the Zulu warriors made up in their grass skirts. Years ago they used to roam the streets. Now they're confined to the float. And it looks like they're drinking some nice stuff, too. Oh! Thank you. Just caught a Zulu umbrella. How about a coconut? This is float number nine now, the mayor of Zululand. The castles of Scotland. anymore. The mayor of Zululand going by. Now you're looking at float number 10 in the Zulu parade this year. And float number 10 is the province prince. This are... Zulu parade has 30 floats in it this year. Some of the double-deckers, as you see here, going by. And it seems as though they're smiling a little bit more than throwing. I sure wish they'd <laughs> throw some more to well, me. Well, it's a long parade route, you know, and you, you can run out of throws real quick. Real quick. It's about a six-mile parade route. And now looking at... Uh, Marching in from the Robinson Dance School to the St. James High School going by. Now float number 11, the Zulu governor.
And this they're out the in the game. Arctic. Right, the Arctic. Except it's not cold here today. Thank heaven. And everybody is just shouting and yelling for those coconuts and Zulu beads. I don't know if you heard that thud. A coconut just hit the floor here. You're looking at float number 12 now, the Mr. Big Stuff. And to be a big stuff, Charlie, you have got to have a tomahawk. So here is a tomahawk just for you. Listen, I've got this a Zulu umbrella here. That's probably the best thing you could have caught today, especially for later on this afternoon. <laughs> but this will keep you in line. If you don't lend me your umbrella, you're in serious trouble. And here's Mr. Big Stuff with the graceful swans. There are several hundred members of the Zulu organization these days. Looking at now the Booker T. Washington High School Band. Let's they give are. a listen. Okay, let's take a pause here, Megan. Let's go out to Alec and Nancy in Fat City. Hello from Fat City. Lots of crowds, lots of nice weather. Oh, Nancy and I are having a lot of fun out here today. The weather really is gorgeous. Nancy and I have been strolling up and down the street here among a sea of people and uh, a lot of folks having a lot of fun out here. We'll have a parade just a little while. In a little while, and the theme is 10 years of Carnival in Metairie, and it certainly looks like everybody came out to celebrate, whether it's for the 10 years or not, we don't know. And I can't. We got our own little cherry squad here, folks. One of the things I'm looking forward to seeing, Nancy, is a thing they call the Super Float, which is going to lead off the Argus Parade, which is supposed to come by this location about, uh, oh, 50 minutes from right now. And I got a message for Charlie and Margaret back there. Listen, we may be out here in Fat City, but we expect to have at least one Zulu <laughs> coconut apiece. Got that straight, Siwi? <laughs> back to Canal Street. <laughs> Yeah, we got you, Alec. We're working on that. We're trying to get those coconuts now, and they're still, they're still teasing us. We've got a couple here, but I think they're already, uh, somebody already has claimed them. You think we ought to explain these costumes? I think we should. The theme of the Rex Parade this year, folks, is the Sovereign's Symphony. We'll be taking a look at uh, Rex saluting various symphonies, and I guess I'm a either made up as a doorman. No, or as <laughs> you're the 1812 <laughs> Overture, don't you know? And you're Scheherazade. No, I'm not Scheherazade. I am knight in the gardens of Spain. Can't you tell You're telling me, this kid. Is a knight outfit. Who did you spend? Never mind. Time. <laughs> They've been throwing us all kinds of things. We have yet to catch a coconut. They did give me one earlier, though, on the breakfast edition. That's float number 14 in the Zulu parade you see going by there. And that is the sheriff. Zulu's theme again this year is Zulu's Book of Nature. And each of the, uh, whoa. Set of beads. They're throwing right things here. at you, Charlie. <laughs> You're looking at the Walter L. Cohen High School Band coming into view now. And you're looking at the Zulu Parade live from Canal Street. Let's check in now at Lee Circle with Dan, Milham, and Joe Malter. Dan? The stands are just about full here at Lee Circle. Just about as many people in the, in the seating areas as you can get. And now the, the grass around uh, old Robert E's statue is starting to get pretty crowded with folks as they find their spots and set their coolers down and get themselves a real good seat for the festivities to come. Of course, the weather is gorgeous. Even the clouds that we had thought would greet us this morning haven't shown up yet. The only thing that's shown up has been an entire beautiful Zulu parade. Joan is here, of course. Joan? You know, it was remarkable how quickly that area filled up within yeah. 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Anybody who plans to sit there and meet anybody there better get there soon. You better get there now, yeah, because it really is filling up quickly as the people finally come on out. Now that Zulu's passed and we have a lull between Zulu and the units that precede Rex, uh, people are taking an opportunity to get a more permanent place for the rest of the day. Uh, we've seen uh, the, the typical array of costumes. I saw a couple of beautiful yellow exotic birds walk by. A couple of human, purple human trash cans. Purple human trash cans that uh, absolutely ran from the shelves at K&B. 
right out here to Lee Circle. Darth Vader's been by, of course, and that's only the beginning. Let's go back to Charlie and Meg at uh, Canal Street. Go ahead, Charles. Well, Groit is going by right now, Charlie. Do you know who Groit is? No, who's Groit, Meg? Groit is the majestic eagle. You've got to pay attention. A coconut, please! Coconut, coconut. Oh, you got I, one, Meg. Thank I you. I just Thank caught you. a coconut. I did it. Is that your first right one? Here. That's your this first one? This is the first one I have ever caught in my life. We can show people. Of course, we, people know what the Zulu coconuts look like. Well, they may know, but they've never seen one really up close. Do you think, Charlie? Oh, yeah. Take it out of the bag, which you have to be. You're looking at... <laughs> I'm busy. You go ahead with the <laughs> review now. Club number 16, the Snake Charmer. Zulu's Book of Nature this year. There's a coconut. Boy, now this looks like a Snake Charmer or something like that. Can you take a look at that coconut? So 83. All... Now, I wait. I don't see the... Um... Well, we know it's official because they threw it to you off the float, right? I know, but where's the Zulu emblem? Uh, Somebody's going to think I have a fake. It's inside. Isn't that nice? Float number six. And here comes a snake charmer. Zulu crew this year really generous with the throws. See a lot of people reaching up. A lot of tourists in this crowd naturally down on Canal Street. Also a lot of locals, as is the case every year. And now, you're right, not too many people are in costume, but the ones we've seen have been pretty uh, pretty original. You saw someone who looked like Bluebeard go Absolutely. by. Absolutely. Right down to the to the old peg leg. Uh-huh. Now, for those of you who are just... Wait, someone's calling to me. One of the... Hammond! How are you? Oh, oh. there goes a cup. I can't catch. That's great. Thank you. One of the other great favors this year, which is, which is new this year, are the cups that have been um, silk screened and printed for the various crews. This is a Zulu cup. Uh, and these have Charlie, been really you popular. just missed it. Uh, spear was thrown at I'm your glad. back. I'm yes. glad. <laughs> if we could see the spear, please. But these are some of the best favors this year. This could do some major year. damage to you if it hit you in the wrong way. <laughs> and it was going right towards your back. They, they wanted you to catch it, Charlie. I'm That's sure. really the case. We're beginning to load up with favors here. Float number 17 now. The tribal chief. And they've got a bear in the front. Now, for those of you who just tuned in, King Zulu, 1983, the 67th Zulu is Jesse Balancier, and he is a real estate man. He actually lives over in Slidell, and the queen this year is Michelle Baptiste. Woo! Charlie, they're throwing some doubloons to you. Great. You know, this is the best I've ever seen, Zulu, being up here on the sand. We really are lucky. Float number 18 now, the Merrymakers are the mysterious raven. And they are waving those coconuts. I just caught some beads. Woo! Charlie just got a coconut. Yes. <laughs> I almost lost something else, too, which we can't mention on family TV, but that's... Neither here nor there. Now, this is a gold one, Charlie. Are the gold ones supposed to be um, a little bit better? I, I think the real, the, the black ones and the gold ones, I think any coconut you get off of a Zulu parade is going to be uh, going to be a prize edition. And here's the diamond cutter coming up now, I think. Yes, those 19, are the diamond colors. The diamond cutters. really throwing coconuts to this stand now. You know, someone had a very original idea. They had an umbrella which they turned upside down. It's very smart to have an umbrella. You never know about the weather in New Orleans, but they turned the umbrella upside down and they're catching all kinds of beads in that umbrella. Okay, we'll be back to Canal Street and Mardi Gras Madness and a lot more right after this. La la, loves Mardi Gras. Good morning again from Canal Street. Charles Zewee along with Margaret Orr, and you're looking at live pictures of the Zulu 1983 parade going by. And here is the young warrior going by right now. Oh, Charlie, they almost got uh -huh. you. <laughs> Zulu this year, again, putting on Zulu's Book of Nature. Let's go back to Fat City now with Alec and Nancy. Hey. Hey. We are right in the middle of the Rolling Stone Agers. All right. 
These are some people. Where y'all from? Yeah, they're having a lot of fun. Nancy, you're so cute on the screen. You cute her off. Well, you're on the screen right now, too, so why don't you wait? Oh, really? Really? <laughs> As you can tell, everybody out here is having a good time. There you go. Pretty good crowds out here, along with the... I have a little dinosaur. Listen, they may have uh, coconuts on Canal Street, but I have a genuine red dinosaur. I tell you what, these people out here in Fat City are really having a lot of fun. They're waiting for their parade to be showing up here shortly. My gosh, what has that fella got there? It looks I don't, too real to me. I don't know that I want to ask a whole lot of questions about what he's carrying. What have we seen a lot of out here, Nancy? We've seen Smurfs. Right, we've seen quite a number of people who have dressed up like Smurfs. I've seen quite a few clowns uh, around. And I am interested to see that I have not seen one single solitary E.T. Well, it's, it's just as well, I suppose. They probably wouldn't understand if they landed anyway. He says it's real. Um, he says that's real. In that case, would you mind taking that away somewhere else? It's real. Sir? It's, it's real and it's real disgusting. You don't want to contest the do you? No. No, no thanks. I don't want that. You can keep that for yourself. I guess I'm kind of interested because if there's one thing I have to say that I've noticed out here in Fat City, it really is not a theme, so to speak. I've noticed in past parades, past Mardi Gras, you always seem to find something that catches on and you find one big costume that almost everybody's wearing. That's not the case this year. No, we had someone that went by a little while ago that was the, uh, well, sort of a takeoff on the best little uh, whorehouse. It was, um, I can't exactly explain exactly well, then, what it was. Nancy, why did you start then? <laughs> <laughs> Back to Charlie and Margaret on Canal Street. Got yourself trapped there, it didn't you, It looks like they're having a great time. Here we are back in Sulu, another beautiful day. Induna is going by the parents brilliant plumage and take a look at those feathers charlie float number 23 out of 30 zulu floats this year depicting the book of nature we have a little break in the parade and we want to bring in dixie watley who is in town doing a series of reports for entertainment tonight which we'll be seeing in a few days and dixie. certainly will we'll be seeing one tomorrow and then one on saturday i believe and then a couple weeks down the road we'll be having another one which means you've just got to watch every night now there's your costume uh, exactly. I kind of came unprepared. <laughs> Got Dixie, one you can loan me? <laughs> is this a tough assignment for you? I mean, to come down to Mardi Gras to cover the city that Care forgot? It's terrible. I'm having such a difficult time. We had to go and interview Kiss last night, and we had to go down on Bourbon Street and run around among all the revelers, and this is work. I'm getting paid to do this. It's just terrible. I, I don't know how in the world we stand it, and I plan to be back next year if I have to come under my own steam without the show. <laughs> is this your first carnival? It is. Very what do you first think? Time. I'm having the most wonderful time. You know, the one thing I can compare it to is the Rose Parade. The big difference here is that everybody participates and they all have a good time. The Rose Parade, I think, has gotten out of hand. It's not a community affair anymore. And this is just wonderful. You just walk in and walk in the crowd and you're a part of it. We here in New Orleans, you know, see Carnival from year to year and Mardi Gras from year to year, and you're watching a float number 24, a Maz Dizi, <laughs> the Zulu Parade going by. We see it from year to year. What is your first impression of what you've seen here, though? Total insanity that is so much fun. There, there's not really any fear involved. In so many places, you get in a crowd this big, and you'd go, oh, no, what's going to happen? But it's like everybody's having such a wonderful time. Fun, though. <laughs> you heard it first here. Dixie Wadley says it's fun. But we all know that. <laughs> Very true. Thank you, Dixie. Dixie, it's been delightful having you with us. Hope you have a great stay. You come back next year. I certainly will. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good day. Dixie Watley, uh, one of the co-hosts of Entertainment Tonight, who's in New Orleans preparing a series of reports. That'll be on a little bit later, and you're looking at float number 26. Mandingo. And Charlie, I see just a wonderful float coming up right now. It's just behind the one you're seeing now. Float which number 27. There is a peacock over there. Do you oh. think it's the NBC Peacock? Oh, certainly. But today it has to be, right? It, it has to be. That's true. There's the Bantu first, though. And that is float number 27. This is float oh. number 28 now, Lady Zulu, the preening peacock. Or the NBC Peacock. And Charlie, I just caught a doubloon on the fly. Okay, we'll be back from Canal Street, Fat City, Lee Circle, and elsewhere right after this. Happy Mardi Gras. Zulu 
show is almost over. We're right here at the Boston Club on Canal Street, just having a wonderful day on a beautiful Mardi Gras. What you're seeing now is the Caribbean that's just now approaching. Oh, come on, try to pronounce that name. I dare you. It's Aurelia. Aurelius. Aurelius. Zulu Aurelius. or something like that, folks. Do you think that's a Zuluism? I, without a doubt, that's a Zuluism. I decided I wouldn't even try it, but Charlie forced me to try to pronounce that word. Take a look at those coconuts they are handing out now. Just one right after Zulu the other. Zulu riders made up like the Caribbean. Tempting people with those coconuts. There went one. Knocked down one of our technicians. <laughs> I tell you, our technicians are the ones who are ending up with all of those golden nuggets. The theme this year is, of course, the Book of Nature. And this is the final float, number 30, Zulu Shadows. The Jungles of rounding Africa. Out this year's, rounding out this year's Zulu Parade, the Book of Nature, throwing spears off the float. There you Charlie, see. I hate for it to end. Oh, well, we have a lot more to go now. But this, you know, Zulu has, oh, oh a Pac-Man is walking by just now. Zulu has always been one of my favorite parades. You know, that is a local tradition of painting the white around the eye and around the mouth. That started back in the early 1900s, about 1920 is when that started. You know, the first queen of Zulu was actually not a woman. The first queen of Zulu was um, about in 1920 as well, and it was a man dressed up as a woman. And then they said, no, no, no. Ten years later, they decided to finally get a woman as the queen. Let's go back to Fat City and Alec and Nancy. All right, we're back in Fat City, and the Clydesdales are just going past, and that is the beginning of the crew of Argus Parade. Here she comes, the Empress of Argus. You can even see little Lamb Chop sitting there right next to her. I was looking for, oh, there's Lamb Chop. Of course. At her else? right hand. <laughs> How appropriate it should be at her right hand. I think that, uh, I think it's a mistake to say that Sherry is the Empress. I have a feeling it's more Lamb Chop. Well, that's true. You know, Lamb Chop uh, took a lot of credit for this. Uh, what you're looking at right now is a float called 10 Years of Mardi Gras in Jefferson. It celebrates the first decade. It is a tidal float. And it's called the Super Float. And it does look like a Super Float. But it's a double decker. Got people on both sides of that thing, top and bottom. And Miss America throws us all some beads. Oh, she wouldn't throw Alec any beads. No, but well, she'd throw me a kiss, Nancy. This is float number five called Aesop's Fables. And it has one of my favorite things on it, a giant unicorn right up there in the front. It's really got some lovely colors on it, lots of purple and green. A flower garden shading one end of the unicorn who rests lazily upon Aesop's fables. I mean, you remember a Aesop's fables, huh? Colorful blooms. Here we have uh, Mrs. America. Mrs. America, Rhonda Migrini. She is Mrs. America. She's very pretty. Colorful fish and a beautiful mermaid. Ah, sounds like something for you, Alec. I certainly hope that colorful mermaid doesn't run us down here. Oh. All right, I just got a cup for Marcus. <laughs> you got, whoop, oh. Oh. What? Coming up next is number eight, Miss Louisiana and Maids. Our trouble is, Nancy, once we catch things, we can't hold on to them. <laughs> okay, what you're looking at now is float number nine, another giant float. Boy, this parade has got some big floats. Blaine Kern has designed some large super floats, as they are known. It's kind of interesting the way you can see this parade. You get to watch the crew of Argus going by on one side, while immediately on the other side, you can still see the truck parades going by. As you're seeing right now, the truck parades are starting into Severn, heading up toward 19th Street for a U-turn and then back to Veterans Highway. And we'll be back in just a moment. My heavens, Look what at is this. That? This is one of the best costumes we've seen so far. I guess this is- Is that a crawfish? It's a mud a, yeah, bug? It's a big, it's a big crawfish. It's a, it's a human crawfish making its way down Canal Street. I thought it might have been a caterpillar, but it's really a crawfish. I want to take a look at what's going on on Bourbon Street now. Our man on Bourbon Street this year is Bob Krieger. Let's go to him. Bob? Bourbon Street, USA, where you'll meet a sea of the strangest humanity in the entire world. Strange 
Today's humanity, you'll find Pete Fountain and his half-fast walking club. Portraying John Lafitte and Pirates of the Past. And here he is, Peter himself. How's the walk going this year? Good, good. What you see is what you get. It rained on us most of the way, but we all right. That's what you told me last year. <laughs> well, who knows? I love it here in Europe. Every time I come to Europe. Pete really. Fountain loves it in Europe, folks. Every time I come to Europe, I have a wonderful time. Pete Fountain and his pirates, a half-fast marching club, taking one of their hundreds of breaks in one of New Orleans' bars so they can keep the walk going. It's an annual event. Pete loves it, so does everybody else in the quarter. Bob Krieger on Wild and Crazy Bourbon Street. John Phillips approaching the Boston Club. His float will be pulled up next to the Boston Club where the president of the Boston Club will extend the traditional toast. Mr. Edward Poitman. And we should be able to listen in on that this year as Mr. Poitman makes his toast. As president of the Boston Club, I would ask for all the members to wish you a most hearty welcome to you, your pages, and your royal entourage. Now, I've also been asked to wish you a happy reign over your royal domain. Your Majesty, we have a little business to transact here, and I wish Felton to give you the official Rex guest card for the club. <laughs> uh, there's a little, a little uh, bittersweet goes with this. This must be used today, as it's no longer good tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, I know your journey has been long and arduous, and I know that you have a few words of wisdom for us. <laughs> Mr. Portman. Your gracious welcome is appreciated. As is the hospitality you have extended to our queen, our lovely queen, her court, and all of the royal guests. I am fortunate today to be aided by two fine young men, Mr. Michael Quirk Walsh, Jr. and, uh, hey. and Mr. Frank Hardy Roddy. Yeah. I've been very over the age of pages today, but it's my desire now that everyone present toast our queen, Miss Eleanor Spicer Bright, to whom I send this bouquet with the hope that she will look back on this day with the same joy that her radiant beauty brings to our court, to the Queen. To the Queen! Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Portman, I also see a lady in a royal blue suit. <laughs> with two uh, lovely young ladies near her in your stands. And I would like now to send her these roses. They are sent in appreciation 
of all the things that she and our two daughters have done to make this day possible. To you, my dear. The roses, of course, going to the wife of Rex this year. Lastly, I would like to toast all of the participants in this marvelous Mardi Gras celebration. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful time and you return home safely tonight. And here is to Mardi Gras. The champagne crashes to Canal Street. The glass crashes to Canal Street. So did the Coke cups. <laughs> Blowing a kiss to his court and the members of the Boston Club. And I hope everyone takes the King's edict seriously to have a wonderful and safe Mardi Gras day. Bidding goodbye to his subjects, now greeting people on this side of Canal Street. And the Queen looks like she's turning a bit red. <laughs> King of Carnival, John Phillips. Now, the parade begins. Playing Rex's theme, If Ever I Cease to Love, it's His Majesty's Bandwagon with the Rene Luop Orchestra. That he may have music wherever he goes, Rex's musicians follow His Majesty's throne car, ever ready to perform, If Ever I Cease to Love, Rex's national anthem. Here is float number three. It's the King's Jesters featuring live animation. See the jesters move. What is a royal court without the royal jesters to poke a little fun at his high and mighty? Even the king himself, Rex never moves without his jesters. And they are throwing lots of beads. They are also showering the queen with lots of beads. And we're having to duck. <laughs> That's the thing about calling a carnival parade is you've got to keep your eyes on two things at once. Ah, here come some beads. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Float number three, the King's Jesters. We're getting lots of beads over here. <laughs> I got a doubloon in the head, too. There you're looking at float number four, the bukra. The fatted ox is the symbol of the last flesh meat to be eaten before the Lenten fast that begins on Ash Wednesday, the day after Mardi Gras. Surrounded by butchers and cooks. Bukra's <laughs> destiny is certain. You know, you know who's coming up next? The Olympia Brass Band from right here in New Orleans. They're some of my favorites. We're delighted to have this old Dixieland marching jazz band, which is so symbolic of New Orleans. We welcome them for their second appearance in the Rex Parade under the direction of H. Duke de Jean. And we hope they'll join us again in the future. And the Olympia Brass Band goes by and into view comes the title float, the Sovereign Symphony. Running the musical gambit from Beethoven to Wagner, Rex recalls important works by some of the world's greatest composers. The Sovereign Symphony. Now that is Pastoral by Ludwig von Beethoven. Beethoven lived from 1770 to 1827. Pastoral is a piece of music which imitates the music of the shepherds. Beethoven in his Sixth Symphony, published in 1809, portrays this in the final movement of what he entitled Symphony Pastoral. And immediately behind float number six is the St. Augustine High School marching band. From St. Augustine High School in New Orleans, the band consists of 180 youngsters. One of our local high school bands making their 16th appearance in the Rex Parade, backed by popular, very popular demand under the direction of Mr. Edwin Hampton. This band has performed for many of the New Orleans Saints football games and many carnival parades this year. Let's listen. And there the queen is, Eleanor Spicer Bright. You should have seen her a moment ago dancing to the St. Augustine High School Band, having a wonderful time. And let me tell you, Charlie, she can boogie. <laughs>
There it is, the 1812 Overture by Peter Ilyovich Tchaikovsky, 1840 to 1893. This is Charlie's float to commemorate the 70th anniversary of Napoleon's retreat from Moscow in the bitter winter of 1812. Tchaikovsky composed this stirring overture in 1888. And here comes float number eight. It's entitled Death and Transfiguration. It's by Richard Strauss. And Strauss, of course, lived from 1864 to 1949. Of Strauss's six famous symphonic poems, this is the second. It was composed in 1889 and depicts musically a patient's deathbed fantasies. Float number eight, Death and Transfiguration. You can see the skulls adorning the this float. The maskers pitching the balloons off the float. And here comes float number nine. It is the Brandenburg Concerto by Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach lived from 1685 to 1750. Between 1718 and 1721, Bach composed six concertos, which he dedicated to the Margrave of Brandenburg, hence the title. They were considered as the finest examples of Baroque period concerto. Honoring Jupiter, written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It's been said of Mozart that his works are unsurpassed in lyric beauty, rhythmic gaiety, and effortless melodic invention. His symphony, number 41, his last composition in this category, exemplifies these qualities. Because it has such a majestic opening, it was nicknamed Jupiter. Rex salutes Mozart and his Jupiter symphony, float number 10. Honor Guard has just passed us by the University of Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia. But there you can see the Night in the Tropics by Louis Moreau. Gottschalk, who lived from 1829 to 1860. This New Orleans born pianist composer was the first American performing artist to win European acclaim, including the praises of Chopin and Berlioz. He composed more than 300 pieces, of which Night in the Tropics is the one of his two symphonic poems. And there you can see the Queen. She is being showered by beads. I don't know that she's catching too much, Charlie, but she sure is having a lot of fun trying to catch them. And here is float number 12, La Mer, by Claude Debussy. Debussy lived from 1862 to 1918. Composed in 1903 to 1905, La Mer comprises three symphonic poems in the impressionistic style, depicting the sea in calm and in restless moods as the action of the wind and waves constantly changes. And with that, we should mention there are a few more clouds beginning to move into the skies of New Orleans. And we can see that rather well endowed mermaid on the front of that float. Now, Charlie, how did you notice that? I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> and there we are. That is just Harazad, float number That's your favorite. Uh, <laughs> actually, Night in the Tropics isn't bad either. <laughs> Scheherazade is by Nikolai Grimsky Korsakov. Korsakov lived from 1844 to 1908. The composer drew on tales from the Arabian Nights for this symphonic suite, naming it for the lovely harem girl who tells the stories. It was composed in 1888. And did you notice anything particularly interesting about float number 13, Charlie? It's got, I mean, a, got a nice turban. I mean, a nice hat, you know? A nice, nice plume. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, well, you noticed something else the last time. Nah. I must have had a lapse. <laughs> here is the streetcar named Desire. Where else but right here in New Orleans? It has live music by George Vanola and, of course, his chosen few. This is a facsimile of the old New Orleans streetcar, which inspired Tennessee Williams' famous work. It's, it's been, for many years, a part of the Rex Patchen. And here it comes. There he is. There is George Vanola and his chosen few. Okay, just coming into view now <laughs> is the Firebird Another one of your suite. favorites, right, Charlie? Absolutely, absolutely. Float number 15, the Firebird Suite by Igor Stravinsky. This is really is one of my favorite pieces of music. Stravinsky, a great master of modern music, first composed this work as a ballet for the Ballet Russe, but he created it from an orchestral suite. The story concerns Prince Ivan's capture of the fabulous Firebird. That is a beautiful float. An absolutely spectacular float in reds and oranges and 
fuchsia. Iridescent color, fuchsia, I guess that's... <laughs> that is fuchsia. And now coming into view, float number 16. The Four Seasons by Antonio Vivaldi. And of course, there's a dark water jazz band from New Orleans, Louisiana, under the direction of Mr. Pete Walbeck, and they are having a great time. Charlie, here is quote number 17. In the Hall of the Mountain Kings, written by Edvard Grieg. In 1874, Grieg wrote incidental music to Ibsen's play Pier Gint. This music was later arranged by the composer into two Pier Gint suites, the first of which, Opus 46, includes In the Hall of the Mountain King. There you can see the thunderous representation of the Mountain King on the front of that float. Did you see his eyebrows, though? Now, float number 18. In the Rex Parade, The Swan of Tonella by John Sibelius. This symphonic poem by the famed Finnish composer is based on a legend concerning the swan that swims and sings on black waters that surround Tonella in the Finnish Hades. And now you see Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin, one of my favorites. A gifted American musician, Gershwin has always had a melodic talent and a genius for rhythmic invention, which is very much in evidence in his Rhapsody in Blue, composed for piano and jazz orchestra. It presents the jazz idiom in classic form. And of course, what these people are interested in is lots of bees. Okay. And here you can see the Carnival in Venice by Helio Bricaldi. He lived from 1818 to 1881. Now we've got live music on this band, and it is in Bricaldi. This is that the does jubilation. not sound like Bricaldi. No, it is not Bricaldi. <laughs> this is the jubilation from New Orleans, Louisiana, on the direction of Leland Bennett. Let's listen. <laughs> Immediately following them is The Devil's Trail by Giuseppe Tartini. Tartini was one of the violin's great exponents and an exceptionally gifted composer of music for the instrument. The famous Devil's Trill was discovered after his death. The sonata, it was said, was inspired by a dream in which the devil appeared to Tartini. And Charlie, there's my float, float number 22, Night in the Gardens of Spain. Well, I've got to say, you looked apart. <laughs> well, I planned it. It's by Manuel de Falla, who lived from 1876 to 1946. The distinguished Spanish composer created this suite for piano and orchestra in 1915. Each of its three movements is dedicated to a lovely garden, including the beautiful Generalife in Granada. Manuel de Falla, Night in the Gardens of Spain. And you know, that's the only float where I didn't catch beads. What do you think the problem well, was? Well, they liked your costume. Now, float number 23, The Miraculous Mandarin by Bella Bartok. Bartok composed this piece as a ballet in 1919, and it tells of a Chinese Mandarin lured to his destruction by a courtesan. Beaten, stabbed, strangled by her confederates, he refuses to die of his many wounds until she shows him symphony. He got whacked there. Now the Rex Parade, 1983, continuing with The Sorcerer's Apprentice. By Paul Dukas, who lived from 1865 to 1935. Now this symphonic poem is best known work of this French composer based on a ballad by Goethe. It depicts the chaos and confusion that ensues when the apprentice attempts to practice his master's magic arts. Let's see. Well, there's the owl. There are the signs of the zodiac. I don't see the broomstick, Nick. Oops. You get it. There you can see the Royal Fireworks by George Frederick Handel. Handel lived from 1685 to 1759. Handel composed his music to accompany a fireworks display which George II of England ordered to celebrate the Peace Treaty of the Axel Chapel. The gala celebration on April 27, 1749 lasted five hours, although Handel's music is less than 30 minutes long. Float number 26, The Flying Dutchman by Richard Wagner. Wag Wagner's earliest operas, or one of Wagner's earliest operas, it was first produced in 1843. It concerns the legend of a phantom ship and the restless voyages of the Dutch sea captain seeking salvation in a woman's law. Wagner called The Flying Dutchman his storm-swept ballad. 
And immediately following uh, the Flying Dutchman, His Majesty's Royal Calliope, or Calliope, as they say in New Orleans. But it is Calliope, <laughs> just like it's Terpsichore, not Terpsichore, as it's supposed to be. This, this Calliope has a very good function in a parade in the event that one of the floats breaks down. All of the riders get off of the float that breaks down and are supposed to climb onto the Calliope and ride the rest of the way. And on top of the Calliope, there are beads and throws set there in case they have to be used. That is great. Okay, let's go to Fat City now. And as we go to Fat City, we're gonna take a look at Lee Circle, how Lee Circle looks from the air today with the thousands of people. We're not gonna... There's Lee They're Circle, look at amazing. that. Amazing. Lee Circle is thronged with people. Look at the crowds gathered all around. Okay, now we're gonna go out to Fat City and Alec and Nancy. Here comes Miss Mississippi, Diane Evans. Coming past our TV6 reviewing stand here. All right, Nancy, prepare to catch. <laughs> Why don't you try it this time, Alec? Maybe you'll, maybe you'll be luckier with Miss Mississippi than you were with Miss America. An Irish theme for this one, a meandering lane bordered by green clovers and a lot of symbols of Ireland, including some mushrooms right there on the front. And as the sign says, this is a remembrance of 1976 of the Argus Parade, the big parade in Metairie. The one that almost came upon hard times because it is on Mardi Gras Day. Very difficult to get a family organization such as the people who are in Argus to give up this day with their families and actually ride on the floats. But they worked it all out. And I'll tell you what, it sure was for the good of Fat City and Metairie. It's coming up is float number 12, Senors and Senoritas of Another Jefferson. <laughs> I don't know how you say Jefferson, except maybe just Jefferson. Probably Jefferson. Hi there, Mr. Tractor Driver. How you doing there? Lots of very spirited people on this float. Whoa. Float number 16. It's called the Oxbow Incident. We have a rather large sheriff sitting right on the front of this float. And I wonder who that sheriff could possibly be. In the Oxbow Incident, you'll find it somewhere. Harry Lee is involved. There he is. bags of beads directly from Sheriff Harry Lee. That was Harry Lee that just threw a whole bottle of beads on us. Sheriff's badges and all kinds of stuff coming down. And hitting us in our microphones and everywhere else too, Nancy. And now coming into Here view. Here comes float number 18, Argus on vacation. Argus may need to go on a vacation after today. It's I mean, you and I need to go on a vacation after this. cruise. Sounds like a good idea. Missed. Argus on vacation being a remembrance of last year's Argus. Mark Twain at the prow in an ornately decorated steamboat plows through the mighty river. That was the mighty river of people. Seems to me I've heard that line before, Nancy. I think we used it when it went by on the other side, but it was so good we might as well use it again. Whoa, <laughs> I just got a lot of beads. And what is coming into view, Nancy, now is the final float, float number 19, the Argus anniversary party. Argus invited the crowds to join in a 10th anniversary celebration. We were music, dancing, lovely ladies, and handsome gentlemen, it says, and lovely ladies like you. But just because this is the last float, it doesn't mean that the party is over. Because the trucks are still coming from the first time around. Well, we have people coming by to say hello. Hello there. Everybody's having a good Mardi Gras. Lots of fun still going out here. Nancy. All out here for a long time to come. Smile, you're on camera. Absolutely. We've enjoyed it a lot. I'll tell you what, I'm enjoying the parade immensely, but this is a this is a beating out here where you can't hear yourself think when those bands go by. This is really a fun crowd. The only thing, the only thing going on, we're still getting those clouds which are moving in, and that's the best news we could have, Nancy, because we really got away with it. Clean weather all the way. It was a lovely day in Metairie. Thanks for being with us, and we're going back to Canal Street. Let's go up to Lee Circle now with Joan Malter and see what's going on up there. Dan's on his way back to the station to check the weather. Meanwhile, the excitement continues here at Lee Circle as the trucks keep rolling through with unlimited types of uh, styles and revelers. We've seen 
we've seen Checkmate, the Orient Express, and a, and a bunch of bad apples, and the trucks, there doesn't seem to be any end to them. The crowds have changed a little bit. The people have left their spots around the statue and have moved more into the streets. They continue to fight for the throws, and the throws just keep coming. There doesn't seem to be any let up. You can hear the chords, the crowds roaring. They don't seem to be tired. The, the trucks are not stopping. And um, who knows how much longer this can go on. This is up, up, and away. And here comes another one. Come on, rain, come on, shine. That's about it here at Lee Circle. We're winding up Mardi Gras 83, a great Mardi Gras, one that we'll all remember. Back to you, Meg and Charlie. Well, the crowds are really getting up close to the trucks, and that's one of the big dangers of Mardi Gras. Well, Mardi Gras 1983, it certainly has been a great one right here on Canal Street. It, it has been. I think it's come off just about as well as could be expected for a carnival. Uh, no reports of any kind of major incidents. Uh, certainly no major incidents or anything untoward down here on Canal Street. It was and it's a, really been a delight. It's really been a happy reign, I think, too, for Rex, John Phillips, for Eleanor Spicer Bright, the queen of Rex, and of course, um, Miss Baptiste, Michelle Baptiste, the queen of Zulu, and Jesse Balancier, the king of Zulu. And we want to thank you for watching. For everybody here at TV6, Bob Krieger down on Bourbon Street, uh, Dan Milham, Joan Malta out in Lee Circle, Ali Gifford, Nancy Holland out in Fat City, and of course, for my compadre here in the <laughs> uh, We really enjoyed bringing this to you, this Mardi Gras 1983. Thanks for watching, and happy Mardi Gras, everybody. That's right. Happy Mardi Gras. TV6 at Mardi Gras. Highlights of the day's spectacular events was brought to you by, in part, the people in our town who bring you delicious Coca-Cola. Refreshment at its sparkling best. Coke is it. Loves Mardi Gras. Ooh, la, la.